Looks like it's time for our heroes to gear and level up. But there might be a few surprises in store. This month on d d Minus. Your trip back to the city is relatively uneventful. And when you arrive back at the squeaky wheel, you find it's been running itself just fine with the staff you hired. Blade and Floon are sitting in the main room of the bar as you arrive. They greet you warmly and listen to the story of your adventure on the island of Rhodes. When your story is finished, Blade stands up and says, Well, that was quite a tale. But we're going to need to gear you up for the next part of the wand ASAP, which means we got to go back to Gary. Now, once again, he's got something new going on, but this time we're going to have to wait until night to go see him. And uh, make sure you dress spiffy. Oh, I thought you were going to say sexy. Yeah, I mean, sexy and spiffy, if you know what I'm saying, because this time there's a dress code. Do we want to take bets on what the new venture is? (laughs) Dance club? (laughs) (laughs) I'm sorry. A fantasy dance club sounds pretty good. Oh, now I want to switch it to a fantasy dance club. So it's not that. There's a fancy dress party in the sewers. Yeah, didn't he get like flooded with shit last time we were there? Or like <laughs> I talking think a lot it about did. that? Yeah, yeah, he gets flooded with shit all the time. Okay. We're gonna dress fancy <laughs> for that. Are we all on board with that? You you don't know what he's got going on. So you travel the path in the sewers you've been down twice before through the dark. However, Even before you reach the large chamber that contains Gary's hut, you can hear it. There is clapping and cheering. You hear the clink of glasses and the clicking whir of wheels in motion. When you reach the outside, beneath the scratched out words, Gary's badass tattoo parlor, which in turn is beneath the scratched out words, Gary's magic stuff, is written in big, bright, magically lit up letters, Test your luck at Gary's Casino. Oh, this is going to be good. I had to dress fancy for this. I was going to say, do you think we dress fancy for casinos? (laughs) We'll just go in like pajamas. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I I don't know about you, but I am wearing my greatest, my finest Hawaiian shirt and (laughs) and board shorts. And I got... I got very fancy sunglasses for this. Did you say bird shorts? (laughs) Bird shorts. You're the one in bird shorts, man. Come on. (laughs) (laughs) What about my fantasy, fantasy, Scott? I'm sorry if my fantasy dwarven accent is bothering you. All right, bird man, bird man. Probably the execution. Continue. (laughs) (laughs) Dave's on a rascal for no reason because it's a casino. (laughs) I have my pleated jeans also. I I have a fanny pack full of cars. Nice. (laughs) As you duck inside, you're surprised to find that the crowded, empty hut you knew and tattoo parlor you remember most recently have been replaced by a huge casino floor. The city's elite mingle and gamble among you as elemental security guards cross the floor looking menacing. Across the room, you spy Gary, decked out in what he obviously thinks looks like a tuxedo, and he (laughs) spots you, moves across the floor and says, Hey, guys, how was Rhodes? Can he see us yet? Should we just go away? Do we want to talk to him? I believe he just talked to us right now. He's from across the room. Yeah, he saw us. He saw us. Okay. He he ran. Can he he hear us saying this? Yes, he can. He's looking at us very very straight. Like a foot away. You can hear. Mm -hmm. Hi, Gary. Hello. Hi. Well, Blade tells me you're going to need a little help on your next adventure. So I think I have just the game for you. Follow me. And he pushes past gaming tables, slot machines, to a less crowded part of the room with a velvet rope in front of it that says, Heroes Only. At the back of the room, there's one huge machine. It's a contraption you've never seen before. At its center is what I guess you would describe as an anvil with a shallow well in the center. Gary proudly stands next to it and says, This is the Revender! Place anything you like in here, 
and it will imbue it with a magical property or Ooh. make it stronger or um, put a terrible <laughs> curse on it. But mostly it does those first Sorry, two things. Mostly. What are the odds on all of those options? Do you have that in front of you? It's a casino. Where is your sense of adventure? I like to know the odds before I play. I, I feel I'm like playing. that's an important casino thing. Actually. Yeah, it's like a super important. It's like the only important casino thing. That, there's well, I, I would say there. that it only curses the object like three out of 20 times. What percentage <laughs> is that? What percentage would you say that is, Gary? Three. Three. Nope. Nope. <laughs> Four. Twenty. Nope. Four, five. How many 20s in 100? Elementals don't do math. <laughs> Nailed it. Nine. The casino's going to do great. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> There's this beholder I know. He's going to fund the whole thing. It's going to go great. Yeah, no, yeah, um, I'm sure he's uh, batting a thousand on those. Have, haven't seen him for a while. I hope he's okay. <laughs> he had a little cough. <laughs> so here's how this is going to work. <laughs> here's how this is going to work. I have assigned good and bad properties to random numbers from 1 to 20. So it's not high roll, good things happen, low roll, bad things happen. For three of the options in 1 to 20, your whatever you put in there, it can be your equipment, your cloak, your weapons. Okay, you guys are all thinking, put your dick in there, right? That's exactly <laughs> what I thought. Well, I was thinking okay. my ass, but yeah. yeah like 17 out of 20, my dick's like tattoo. positively magical, and three, it's See? negative. I don't know. Yeah. See, I'm I don't know about die. you. I was, I was thinking about putting my nose in there or a hand. Okay. All right. right? Uh, I mean, you can put your personality in there, but I will tell you, there is also the option to make whatever you put in there plus one. So you can put weapons and armor and stuff in there as well. You can also get plus one and two magical properties. So whatever you'd like to choose, you can put into the revendor. I have a quick question. Are we allowed to use our um, dice modifying skills on this? Absolutely. Okay. But they're kind of based on 20s being good and ones yeah, being Yeah, it's like just that, completely right? random. Yeah. So. yeah. Are, we al are we allowed to like instead of it being like a, a critical success or a critical fail, like the polar opposites of the choices? Are we Absolutely. Or? Yeah. So if you okay. want to use your all or nothing coin for this, if you roll below a 10, you'll get the curse. And if you roll above a 10, you'll get plus one to whatever you put in there and two magical properties. Well, I'd flip a coin, right? Right. I, I see what you're saying. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. But the odds are in your favor better than a coin flip to get the positive thing. Yeah. Much right, better. Right, yes. Yeah. yeah. So don't do but that. But don't let that stop. No, don't let that to. stop I was, you. I was actually more worried. <laughs> let about, that stop um, you, actually. <laughs> that's exactly no, I was thinking about Snedrick's thing with the uh, where he can alter. Oh, the portents. The yeah, portents. Yeah, right. portents. But it's yeah. again, it's completely random. So yeah. unless one of you guys like gets a fourteen, and I have a and fourteen as know. a portent, you know, and I and and, and your yeah. thing was good, right? Yeah, exactly. And. I thought of that ahead of time. I'm going to make you all say your numbers at the same time before I tell you what good stuff or bad stuff happens. <laughs> so, yeah, there's cool. no... We're all going to delay. Ooh. Just wanted to check. <laughs> oh, see wait. I thought we, we were going to do this one at, a, one at a time. You will... Uh, Story-based, you will go one at oh, a time, but for you, <laughs> the D&D &D party, you will all roll and say numbers. <laughs> oh... Eventually, he's going to make us do roll and roll 20 so he can yeah, see everything. Yeah, I, I called Bill Belichick to help me out with this particular thing. <laughs> so everybody, roll a d20 for me. I haven't decided what I'm going to put in yet. Right? Come on. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, I'll keep my one. Oh, I'm putting my bread robe. <laughs> oh, that's a great wow. idea. Wait, you're going to you're gonna magic up your magic thing? I yeah. I mean, you already have a magic thing. I feel like it's gonna have, the bread's gonna be so much more interesting. <laughs> you're gonna make Eli do an entire. Oh yeah, you're gonna have table. to make like <laughs> spreadsheets of charts of spreadsheets <laughs> about the spread. Here's a question: Will we know if it's a curse or not? Oh, you will absolutely know because oh. uh, I will tell you. Ah, you God will tell us, but in yeah. character we don't know whether it's a curse. Oh, Gary, or not. I'll tell. I like you. how oh. we're all delaying rolling this d20 I until know. we can find out more information from Eli about well, how he's gonna don't run we this have cheating to, scam. Like, don't we have to? decide what we're going to put in first? Yes, we yeah. do. All right. I, I feel like you use something that would be easy to replace if it gets cursed, right? So I'm going to, I was thinking of using my rope. Right, you like know? don't use your hand. I was thinking of putting my backpack in. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Ooh, so yeah. not dick. <laughs> well, okay. I mean, do you use it a lot? That's the question. <laughs> well, so you have a lizard thing going on. I don't know if you can regrow yours. 
Mm. That's true. You might be able like to do that. Like a tail, like you could like make it fall off to distract anything that's following you. Like a now like a new here's tail. the downside of putting your rope or your backpack in. If you roll well and you get a plus one rope, that's nothing. That's nothing. But if you put in a sword and you have a plus one sword, that's a badass. Do I have any weapons? I like I don't like I don't even know where I, I think you have like a rapier or something weird. I don't, you have you have a weird. I'll loan you my blunderbuss if you want to do it. <laughs> I don't think I actually have it. Like I have a small knife, but I don't think I, I don't, yeah do I the blunderbuss. Have let's see what happens. Uh, no, I'm not. Gonna Can do the tattoos your shit. go in? Are the tattoos able to go in? Nope, those are your body. <laughs> you said we could put our body in. Yeah, you did say oh, we yeah. could put our body in. Well, if I put my mustache in, you could put your mustache That's in. That's an awesome want. idea. I'm going to put my mustache in. I'm going to go first. I'm going to do it. Mustache, mustache, mustache. I, I may have, uh, British Bridget may have drunk a little bit more out of her wine skin than she thought, or her, her, her water skin than she thought, which is usually full of her gin. Anyway. Got it. All right. All right. I'm going to put my mustache in. Yes. Uh, is everybody put, Do it. Do it. Oh, my goodness. This is going All to right. be great. I, I bet you won't. I bet you ain't got the guts to really do that. Roll the dice. Oh, you snedrick. You snedrick. Oh, God. That's that, that literally went on the floor. 18. 18. You got a plus right. one mustache now. 18. Uh, well, Claw, what are cursed. you putting in? I'm going to put the uh, fist of the elements in. Oh, you're putting your, your hand in. You're mm -hmm. wing. Yep. All right. Wing. Is it on my wing? Yeah, I would have oh, I thought you would have yeah. chosen a different place for that. I think what I wanted to do was turn my 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 actual hand becomes a tattoo, and oh. then Eli was like, "You don't have a hand." And I was like, "You don't have a hand." There was a whole thing, whole back and forth. <laughs> I rolled a ten. Ten. All right, Snedrick. Well, I know to do what the what the DM is kind of like hinting you should do, so I'm gonna put my dagger in there. Nice. And I'm going to roll a one. Yeah, I bet you that's Sir. good. <laughs> All right. The good news is I can throw that away. It ain't, it's not like, you know, my wing. Yeah, I definitely took a chance. Well, you can shave a mustache, right, and regrow it. That's you can shave fair. A wing. That's fair. Yeah, but like an anvil might land on your face the way the machine's set up. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> just a heads up. A piano just falls on my face. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, what you putting in? You guys think I should do the robe of bread or my blunderbuss? Absolutely, blunder your blunderbuss. Blunderbuss. Because there, there, there has to be more reason for you to use that fucking blunderbuss in this game. Right? <laughs> it's just not enough <laughs> yet. Blunderbuss. Blunderbuss. You guys hear somebody chanting blunderbuss who's not with us? <laughs> I... God is always with you, Heath. Okay. <laughs> We're, very Christian <laughs> We're a very Christian podcast. So what was that? Was that a vote? For, everybody voted for Blunderbuss? Because if that's what happened, I'm clearly doing the, the robe. And make, oh, my God. If you and stop, make Bridget talk. break the tie. <laughs> okay, Bridget, your, your call. Oh. It's a tie oh. until you call it. I guess you also can vote, bread, or do I want someone to put a fucking curse on that Blunderbuss so he'll stop talking about it all the time? Ah. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm going to go with the Blunderbuss. All right, I'm going to do the bread. <laughs> Got it. Our interesting bread robe going in. Bread robe going in. All right. I know where you sleep. That's a 10 spot on the roll. 10 spot. Oh, you okay. made me so happy. You're such a liar. You. You're such so, a liar. Wait, no, so, so Morgan, and, Morgan and Heath got the same thing, right? You, Morgan and Heath got the same thing. I'm so happy. Awesome. Okay. Oh, it was actually a nine. Mm, <laughs> you know call. what? The 10 from this angle, what it is, I'm looking at that line. It really looks. Is it top looks down like or is a, it? <laughs> looks like a niner. It was a zero one. Oh, damn it. You beat me to it. You beat me to it, you son of a bitch. Oh, you know what? This is binary. It's a two. One O is two in binary, actually. So, Bridget, you step up first. Oh, my goodness. <sighs> Roll a D100 for me. All right. One second. Wait. Oh, yeah. I can't do that. He grows 63 new mustaches. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be so cool. But like yeah. straight out as opposed to all over her body. <laughs> <laughs> 140. Uh, just a, a roll. 100. A Sorry. D100. Nope. That is not That is not what I was... So that would have been a 14. 14. 
All right. Your mustache takes on the astral property. When traveling oh. the astral sea or any other astral plane, it takes half the number of hours to locate a color pool to a specific plane. You have advantages on saving throws versus the effects of psychic wind and other psychic attacks. So, well, that's going to come in handy all the fucking time. <laughs> I feel now we like got to go to an astral plane. <laughs> I feel like a beautiful unicorn with my ma mystic. I have a mystic mustache. Yeah, your mustache sparkles <gasps> and becomes a deep and redolent purple. I am the prettiest dwarf y'all have ever seen. All right. And Gary turns to you and says, all right, um, mustache. Wow. Uh, who's next? It's up to you. We all rolled. All right. Uh, Claw, you just spoke. Who is your next? <laughs> so uh, with a 10, you are granted two magical properties to your wing. Yes. Uh, to, the, to the tattoo, right? To the tattoo, yes, which is on your hand. So do me a favor, roll a D100 for me. So I just roll like two D10s and then it's... Exactly. A, a single okay, 73. 73. Your tattoo's coloring changes. You still have the elements all around it, except the colors are now rainbow and everything that was drawn like realistically before looks like it's been woven or knitted, right? So it looks like everything in the tattoo that's represented is now made of yarn. And here's what this does. <laughs> you may change the damage type of a spell that you cast once per long rest. Okay. That's the rainbow. And whenever you cast a spell, your tattoo gains charges equal to the spell's level. You can then use a bonus action to remove 13 charges and make that tattoo or make your strikes with your hand a plus one weapon until the start of the next round, all charges are lost during a long rest. Oh my God. Oh my God. That's going to happen to the bread coat. So you can superpower. <laughs> you can basically superpower your fist and you have uh -huh. some extra spell slinging abilities. There. So fucking excited about this bread robe. I'm very confused, but I will read it. I, don't, yeah, like, I, I had no it. idea what happened there. Yeah, I was just, I glazed I over at a certain It's point. rainbow yeah. yarn. Got it. <laughs> you turned into rainbow yarn. Um, Heath. Hello. Or Dave. Hello. <laughs> you step up <laughs> to Gary. He presses down. Uh, roll a D100 for me. Got it. 52. 52. All right. Is his cloak now made out of yarn? Uh, so <laughs> your blunderbuss. No, it's my bread robe. There's, oh, your bread robe. Your bread robe, it just feels a little capricious. What? You know when you're wearing sure. clothes and they feel capricious? Sure. But nope. for capricious, some reason yeah. you feel, yeah, Clothing. you feel <laughs> lither or something. Yeah. So why don't you define this um, word you're using? It? Is it redolent also? Would you say it's redolent? <laughs> redolent yeah. The way purple is sometimes redolent is the aroma of purple is what you described earlier. So capricious purple. Here's what you have for this. You can roll a die every time you've completed a long rest. If your result is an even number, you get plus one to your robe of bread summoning. So it's just a stronger robe for you. Does that mean um, bigger bread? Better armor. So plus one means better armor. You get plus two to your um oh, bread your units. AC instead of plus one. It's not it's not bread based, it's also armor. Oh, this robe is also armor, and now it's better yes. armor. Now it, it it will be better armor if you roll an even number after you complete every long rest. And because you get the second power, every time you are first in the initiative order, you may use your robe as a plus one weapon. What, like just smacking <laughs> people with it? Yep. And it will be a plus one weapon. It will Fantastic. be a one weapon. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, exactly. <laughs> it is a robe. Wait, wait, wait. Does that transfer to the bread too? Or like, so yeah. if he pulls out bread, can he throw bread at a plus one? It does that. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It's so much better if that is, if the answer to that question is yes. So yes. <laughs> All right. It absolutely is. I'd like to summon um, some bread right now. 
<laughs> well, you're not first in the initiative order. We didn't and it's not initiative. every time. You have to be first in the initiative order, Heath. First in the initiative order. Uh, and then, Snedrick, mm-hmm. you put in Moving your dagger. On. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Plowing on. Oh, and I forgot the most important thing. Uh, Dave, yeah. when you get your bread road back... Nope, never mind. That was something I had planned if you had put your... Blunderbuss in there. Never mind. That's <laughs> deleted. Deleted. <laughs> deleted <laughs> from do tell, do tell. It's just a it's just stupid word play. It's not. I'll, I'm going to do it later. So. Hey, Gary, trust me. Do you me. mind if I also put my, my whole... blunderbuss in there? <laughs> no, you can't. Get... No, you ruined it. You ruined it by putting your bread rope I feel in like, there. I feel like you want me to put Stand my blunderbuss in there. I feel like you added something ready, something special for that. Uh, Dave, I have a feeling Gary's going to side tackle you if you don't shut up about it. <laughs> so, uh, Snedrick, you put your dagger in there and you have plus one and an option that I didn't tell you all about because you get plus one to your dagger, so it's now a plus one dagger. Not a lot of use to a wizard. Sweet. But it is also cursed. (gasps) Roll a d100 for me. I roll optimal. We'll call that 46. 40... Six. <laughs> oh no! This is I have amazing. a feeling <laughs> when God laughs, that's not good. This I don't is know so what's going to happen, but it's, I'm so happy. <laughs> this might as well say, "Here you go, no illusions." Here's the curse I have for you. All right. Oh, no. Whenever you use the, you use this dagger for an hour afterwards, you must compulsively juggle any <laughs> items. <laughs> When you have two or more of an object within easy reach. Fuck yeah. The, the, the DC <laughs> is 10 plus, plus the number of items being juggled in an acrobatics check or the item gets dropped with appropriate consequences. Oh, that's, this isn't a curse. This is a blessing. Yeah. This is a blessing. It's just a blessing for everyone but me. No, that's amazing. That's awesome. <laughs> so when I said optimal, I fucking meant it. Okay. Yeah. yeah awesome. You awesome. You found the perfect thing. Use All right, the dagger so you... for something now. <laughs> oh, just oh, oh. the camera pans out as Snedrick attempts his first juggling. Yeah, I should cut your bread, some of your bread, because now I have a plus one dagger to cut your plus one bread with. <laughs> I would like to drink some bread. And then you'll juggle the bread. Oh fuck yes. <laughs> oh, everything's coming up roses. All right. <laughs> hey, everybody, just popping in to say thank you again so much for listening to the show. We have a ton of fun making I know I say this every month, but we have a ton of fun making it, and I'm glad that y'all are enjoying listening to it almost as much as we enjoy making it. I know it's a short episode this month, but we got to get these per episodes out of the way so that we're ready for the big chunks of adventure. We've got a little something interesting coming up for your next episode. A sort of, I don't want to spoil it, but we got something interesting coming up for your next episode. And then we're going to jump back into the adventure proper. I just, this was too good an opportunity to resist as you will probably find out by the end of the episode. So yeah, we've got a lot of fun coming up in the next couple of months. I can't wait to jump into the next part of the adventure. It's It's pretty cool, and I hope you guys are as excited to listen to it as I am to make it. If you like the show, hey, go on iTunes or Spotify or all those places you can leave reviews and leave us a five-star review. It actually makes a huge difference to how many people find out about this show or listen to this show. So do that stuff because it really does matter. And if you love the show and you want to support the work we do, why not head over to patreon.com forward slash dnd minus. For as little as a dollar an episode, you get extra stuff like the first short game we played, the worst and the dimmest, or two Dungeon Master's Corners where I sort of do a little AMA about D&D and my opinions on various things in the game and just Dungeons and Dragons in general. You also get commercial-free versions of this show. So if you hate this middle part where I come in and thank you, well, you can get rid of me. Forever, I vanish. And then you just have to listen to the adventure all and don't have to listen to me at all. So if that's appealing to you, head on over to patreon.com forward slash DD minus, throw us as little as a dollar, and I will cease to exist. 
at least in your ear, not in reality. I'll still exist as a person. Uh, we don't have a Patreon level for you to make me stop existing as a person. I guess zero dollars is technically a way for you to... This got more... That's not the point. Anyways, I'll let you get back to the show. Thanks so much for listening. We'll see you next month. Bye. Dave, when you return to your room, you've barely cracked the door when you hear Gladys's voice from the mirror in the corner. Dave, pig shit of a house of Darkmoor. What's this I hear about you killing your familiar? Oh, hey. Hey, Gladys. What's up? Floating behind Gladys in the mirror with his arms crossed is the unsummoned <laughs> Carl the Pug of Pegacorn. See, he's not dead. Gladys turns to you and she says, Carl here says you let him get dissolved in a pool of jelly. Then you got him washed out of a giant's anus. He also says on the boat ride back, you bet some of the crew he could fight a shark and he got eaten. <laughs> well... A, he should have pulled the levers better. B, he should have fought the shark better. I feel like that's mostly on him. And he's I, fine. I, I, you said to pull them randomly. Down, 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 down is perfectly random. That's not random. That's the opposite of random. That's like no, the least random. random possible thing you could have it done. Is, it's the amount of random as every other possibility. That's not how most people understand the word random. <laughs> He totally nailed that, though. That was there's like well, well done, man. You stood up mathly to Heath, and he had to go like, "Oh fuck, that's technically right." Oh, God damn it, <laughs> Carl, Carl is much smarter than I am. Gladys interrupts you and says, "Look, kid, Carl is my envoy. He's here to help you, but he's also there to keep you in check. So you leave me no choice." She snaps her fingers, and the golden chain around your wrist glows brightly for a moment and then fades again. She looks at you and she says, kid, your work's been good, real good. But the next time Carl dies, there are going to be consequences. Carl, you want some bread? <laughs> I'll make you garlic bread. You can't decide that it's going to be garlic bread. It might be garlic bread. <laughs> plus one garlic bread. I mean, you can, you can pretty much just keep pulling it until you get garlic. The garlic bread has to be in there somewhere. Cedric, you spend your time off studying at the Floon Library, leafing through ancient tomes, filling in your spell book, and practicing. If you want to call it that, sure. <laughs> it's on one of these study days that you're joined by Floon, who looks over your newly upgraded wand of seven parts. Because of the addition of the Lifestone, in addition to the two spells it already knows, you now have a third spell slot in the wand, and you can perform the spell Aura of Vitality by using all three slots. If this spell lasts more than four hours, do I have to um... <laughs> call a doctor? <laughs> yeah. And we'll find out or what juggle. that spell is the first time you use it, or when listeners Google it, because I can't stop them from doing that. D&D minus <laughs> slash Roman. <laughs> That night, you have another prophecy dream, but this dream is not of the future, but of the past. You dream of your days at the Gnome Wizard School in the city of Athiana. You dream of the favor you did a classmate, of the one who betrayed you, of the headmaster pointing her hammer of justice at you as you were expelled, of your long and dangerous journey from your home to this city. And then you wake up to the sound of a drawer opening. And as you look next to your bed, you see the seven-drawered chest with a drawer near the middle sticking open, which is odd because the seven-drawered chest isn't in your room. It's usually downstairs on the bar. You open the note, and inside the scroll of paper is another smaller scroll that's tightly sealed. The larger note says, this is stupid. How would this even make any sense? I'm just saying that this is stupid this is what I would write right now is entirely stupid, but whatever, I guess, use the tiny scroll when you get stuck from grandpa or grandma or whatever. This is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> what? And the other thing is sealed. The smaller one is sealed. The other said? thing is sealed. Yes. And the note has cautioned to you to use it when you get stuck. All right. I'm I'm going to use it. No, I'm kidding. I'm not going to use it. <laughs> you just open it and it's like, oh, I told you it was stupid. <laughs> it 
takes several weeks after your visit to Gary for Blade to come to you with news of the next part of the wand. But one night, as the bar empties out, Blade comes in out of the rain with word. As I suspected, the next piece of the wand is the Locket of Fabrication. It's in the Temple of Athiana, which I believe is where you, Snedrick, went to school. Oh, God damn it. I'm so sorry, sorry, sorry. Do your, do your thing. No, 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 no. I mean, let's hope some old friends are there to help you along. Uh, that said, as Snedrick can tell you, the journey to Athiana is going to be way too dangerous for all of you to manage on your own. So I've enlisted the help of a friend of mine to show you the way. He is the best in the biz. But uh, before he comes in, I, I want to warn you, he's a, a many soul. A what? Uh, it's a many soul. It, it's a rare, incredibly rare condition and a result of a powerful magical accident. See, the leader of my friend's village was a powerful wizard who sought to dominate the minds of everyone in town. Instead, he accidentally pulled their minds into his body where the, the various minds inside his head, they, they all take turns being in control. And, and let's just say that the result is very interesting. Whoa. And as he finishes telling you this, the door opens. A massive figure steps through the door. And Blade says, speak of the devil, here he is. I, I was just telling them about you. The figure throws back his hood and says, I'm fond Dord, the choice for fantasy and adventure. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> Hello. Who, who just spoke through the PA? <laughs> who was that? Uh, where's the next oh. stop? That's what I'm, Is this a local <laughs> or is this express? <laughs> The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2020. All rights reserved.